This is the microbiology lab. So we're just going to go over some general safety things that we use here in the microbiology lab. But a lot of these are standard for any type of a science lab that you would be working with. In. And so some of you may be familiar with this. Number one, you walk in the lab, you put your things aside. Do not put a lot of clutter on your work area. You want to keep your work area as clean as possible, uncluttered as possible. Just what you need for the experiments you were doing that day. Put everything else away. Uh, in this lab, we do have some drawers you can put underneath. It depends on where you are. Some labs will have cubby holes that shelves where you can put your personal items elsewhere. But on the working area, you want it to be as clutter-free. That way, it reduces the chance or the risk of knocking things over, accidents happening. So you'll put your supplies out, whatever you need. When you are done for the day, you will remove the items and then watch your bottles. Uh, in this lab, we tend to have two bottles, one with distilled water and then one that has diluted bleach. When you are done for the day, you will use the bleach to spray down your working area and wipe it clean. The idea is to disinfect it after uh, the end of the day before you leave. So just keep those bottles straight. Once again, keep that work area as clean as possible. When you are working, you're gonna end up with different waste uh, products. How do you dispose of the waste? It depends on what it is. We have several different ways of disposing the waste. Uh, paper towels, gloves when you're done, those can go in the regular trash can. If it is contaminated, it cannot go in the regular trash can. And then we will distinguish, is it sharp or is it a non-sharp item? Up front, in this lab, we do have what we call the uh, sharps container. These typically are always red. This is where you would dispose of any sharp item that is contaminated. Say you were working uh, with bacteria, you're making slides. You would just drop the slide directly in this hole up front here. The slide has the bacteria on it, so it's contaminated, and the slide is sharp. If you were working with needles, it would go in here. Do not put gloves in here. Do not put paper towels on here. Number one, they're not contaminated. Number two, they're not sharp. So only sharp contaminated items. Now, if it is contaminated, but it is not sharp, such as a Petri dish, what we do is we put it into the solid biohazard waste container. This is foot activated, so you don't have to be touching anything. You just push here. You'll notice there is a red uh, liner bag in here. You just would deposit your Petri dishes, Maybe we were using disposable pipettes and those were contaminated. You would put those in there. Now, once again, gloves, paper towels can go into our regular trash cans. There is another type of disposal and that is for broken glassware. We understand that accidents happen. It's a fact of life. You may be working with a beaker of water, or maybe you're getting a slide out to prepare a stain, but you haven't put the bacteria on it yet. In that glass item, the slide, the beaker, whatever, it breaks. You cannot put broken glass in the regular trash can. That is a hazard to our custodial staff, and we obviously want to protect them. So broken glassware, We'll go into, we have a box over here, which is nicely labeled as broken glass disposal. You just drop the broken glass in here. If you did break something, obviously let me or your instructor know so that A, we can properly clean up and make sure that nobody, in the case of broken glass, where nobody was cut or injured in any sort of way. But broken glass where that's not contaminated would go here. If it is contaminated, if it's sharp, it goes in the red sharps container. Now, while you are working, what type of PPE do you need? Personal protection equipment. You need to wear a lab coat. You need to wear gloves. If you do not wear glasses, we have goggles that we provide for you as well. Uh, those are sterilized after every class. If you wear glasses, usually that's sufficient enough. Uh, just to, to wear the, the glasses. Depending on what type of a lab you are working in, you may need additional uh, PPE. 
there are four different levels of labs that we rate them from level one to level four. This is a level one. So you are fine just with the lab coat, gloves, goggles. Level four is the highest um, level in terms of restrictions. There's only a few labs in the United States that are a level four. They are working with the most uh, deadly organisms. So you must be completely suited up. You must have a respirator on, et cetera, and receive special training to work in those labs. We don't do that here. In terms of people coming in the lab, extra people, your friends, family, et cetera, are not allowed in the lab. That's for safety. Uh, we just try to keep the numbers down. Of You don't want a whole lot of traffic of people coming in and out. If you need to meet with someone, that's great. Meet with them outside in the hallway. That's fine. Just, I don't, as I'm trying to supervise the students, have you guys do experiments, we don't need to have a lot of extra traffic coming in and out. In the lab, when you first come in, outside the door, you will have noticed, hopefully, that there is a trash can. That is because there is absolutely no food or drink allowed in the lab. You cannot even throw away your waste coffee cups, french fry wrappers, whatever, in the trash can in the lab. That's for the trash can out in the hallway. This is for your protection. This is standard uh, practice. It's actually regulated by federal law for any lab. I don't care where you're working. But bottom line, it's your safety. You are in a microbiology lab. We are working with bacteria and fungi in here. You do not want to be eating. You do not want to be drinking in here. It is not allowed. And that's watched very closely. You cannot have open toe shoes in the lab. You cannot be wearing shorts. Like I say you can wear a lab cut over. You cannot be wearing sleeveless. So you need to have at least a partial sleeve. Preferably you have your lab coat on. I always get asked about shorts. Uh, you should be wearing a long lab coat. General rule of thumb, and this is established through federal guidelines, is that when you are seated, that your shorts, or ladies, if you're wearing a skirt, or if you're wearing capris, or whatever the latest fashion is, when you are seated down, your knees need to be covered. So that gives you a rule of thumb as to how long it, it needs to be. Any accidents, they should happen, hopefully not. You need to notify me immediately so we can deal with the situation. Most accidents, if they happen, um, it's often due to people getting careless, not using common sense, overcrowding of supplies and stuff on their lab areas. So that's why it's so important though it's stress. Just keep your work area clean, only bring out what you need. Common sense. No horse playing, no running, obviously in the lab. 